welcome back. You're in the kitchen with Chef Carla Andrea, and we're preparing for Taco Tuesday. I know that it's not Tuesday yet, but I always like to give my meat 24 hours to marinate. So let me give you a rundown of our ingredients, and then I'm going to show you how I prepare my marinade. I have one whole orange and lime that I just sliced. I have one bunch of cilantro that I just cleaned, tore off the bottom stem. I have two bay leaf. I have two lime moritas. I believe these are eight ounce cans. Then I squeezed two limes and one orange and I put it in the bowl. And then I have cumin, onion powder, garlic powder, um, pepper, but no salt. Salt we'll add when we throw it on the grill because salt will dry out the meat and we don't want dry carne asada meat. Then I have about two pounds of bottom round that's been sliced thin. I like to do this one because it's economical and has some fat on it. It still tastes good as the skirt steak or the flat meat, but those two meats are a little more expensive and not enough marbleization. So the first thing we're going to do is take our limeritas and just incorporate them into our orange and our lime juice. We have two of them. Then I'm going to take some seasoning. We're going to use all the seasoning. I did about a tablespoon and a half of cumin, black pepper, onion powder, and garlic powder. We're going to whisk this all together. Make sure we get it all nice and incorporated. Then I have a bag that uh, is in a container with a Ziploc. Uh, when I do use a Ziploc, I still like to put it in a container because we all know how Ziploc baggies work out. They tend to have holes, they leak, they make a mess. We have more marinade in our refrigerator than we do on the actual meat. So we're going to throw that in there. I like to just take the, uh, what are these? Cilantro leaves. Sorry, I had a brain fart. I like to take the cilantro leaves and just wipe in the bowl and get all the excess mar marinade out. Then I'll throw in the oranges, the limes. I know that I squeezed the juice of them in there, but I still like, you know, to have the zest and the whole fruit in there. Because believe it or not, it still gives it a nice flavor. I'm going to move this stuff out the way now that we've used it up. Put this back here. Now, I put down plastic wrap because I don't want any meat juice anywhere. I don't want to cross-contaminate it. And I don't know if you can see the thinness in my meat. It's actually nicely thinned and, and cut. Um, where I go, he's, he's a really good butcher. But for you guys that may not have the luxuries that I have, I wanted to show you guys the meat mallet. So that way, if your meat is thicker than mine, you know that you can actually, you know, just flatten it out. So what you want to do is you flatten and you move away. Flatten and you move away. You don't want to just because then it starts denting the meat. It starts tearing the meat. So you just want to flatten and move away. And I'll show you one more time. I've already washed my meat before I put it in here. You know, make sure you guys wash your meat. Get rid of all that excess blood and everything on here. So you just want to flatten, push away, flatten, push away, flatten, push away, flatten, push away, flatten, push away. That's all you want to do, just real quick. You know, you don't want to spend too much time beating on your meat because, like I said, you know, you'll tear it, you know, and it just it won't hold up. So that's all you got to do if your meat isn't as thin as mine. But luckily... My meat is, so I don't have to worry about that. So that's how you handle that. So I'll see you guys tomorrow once the meat has been marinating for 24 hours. And we'll finish celebrating our Taco Tuesday. So I'm going to seal it up, throw it in my fridge. And make sure you take all the air out, just shake it around before you put it in the fridge. And you'll be good to go. See you tomorrow. Taco Tuesday. Howdy, folks. It's Taco Tuesday. I'm here, you're there, we should be together, but since we're not, I'm going to make a wonderful Taco Tuesdays. We're doing the carne asada that I marinated last night. It's finally going down today. I'm going to do some Spanish rice. I have an avocado cream sauce that is off the chain, but the first thing we're going to do is make our Spanish rice. So let's see what we got. We got some chicken broth. We have pepper. We have salt. We have onions. We have rice, uh, this is parboiled, we have diced tomatoes, one can, and chilies, and then I have a quarter of a stick of butter, I'm going to go ahead and throw that in there, let it get all melty, make some melty goodness, 
because I love melty goodness. While that's making melty goodness, I'm going to go ahead and drop these in here. My one white onion that I did a small dice on. Make sure I get all the onion. Get that out the way. I'm going to search for a spoon. Found it. That was an easy search. Mix all this together. Now, this rice is just simple. It's, it's, it's a, you know, no fuss. Very simple rice. It's not going to complicate things. It's not going to make it difficult. I'm sure we all have these ingredients on hand. Uh, I didn't want this rice to be too complex or difficult because it's Taco Tuesday. I should actually have a beer in my hand instead of standing here stirring up vegetables and butter. But I don't. Not yet, though. I'm going to get one. So, yeah, we're not going to make things too complicated. Maybe I should have made a margarita. I didn't think too much about Taco Tuesday today. I'm sorry. Maybe next Tuesday I'll have myself together. So I'm just going to go ahead and dump in my one cup of parboiled rice. Just doing one cup. You know, the more people you have, you can do more cups. This is going to be good for about three to four people. If you got eight, do two cups. Uh, quick quiz. For every cup of water, I mean, for every cup of rice, how much water do you have? Or do you need? Does anybody know? Waiting. No? Okay, I'll tell you guys. You need exactly two cups of liquid for every cup of rice you use. Very simple. It's just two to one. Easy to remember. When I make my rice, I don't like using water. Water, it's bland. You know, it doesn't really have much flavor. I like using a stock. You know, if I know I'm going to be doing rice with beef, I'll use beef stock. If I know that I'm going to be doing something with chicken, I'll use chicken stock. But since I'm making Spanish rice, I just go ahead and use chicken stock because it gives it a lighter color and a lighter flavor. Because remember, the star of the show is the tacos. Oh, did I tell you guys we're making pico de gallo tonight? I don't know. Did I say that? Maybe I did. Alright, this is almost finished. When you go to put in your onions and your rice, let your onions get a quick kick start. But like as soon as you got your, 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 your onions in for a few seconds, go ahead and add your rice. Because what you don't want, you don't want the onions to get overcooked or too soft. And then you don't want, you know, your rice not to get cooked enough. So you want to cook evenly together. So I went ahead and put in, ow, that was hot. I went ahead and put in some salt, some pepper. What did I say about rice? Rice uh, needs a lot of salt. You need a, oh my God, I shouldn't have done that with pepper in my eye. It needs a lot of salt. So we're going to go ahead and just put in a little bit more. Remember, you don't want to add salt to your rice when it's done cooking because it gets all mushy when you go to move it around. And then it's just like, oh, I shouldn't have made this. I shouldn't have done this. So, you know, you don't want to do that. You want to cook your rice just until it's a nice golden aroma, until it's nutty. You can start smelling it through the butter, through the onions, through the salt, through the pepper. So we're almost finished right here. There's one thing I forgot, which I'm desperately going to need. Uh, I need a lid. Give me one second. I'll be right back. All right, I got my lid. You cannot make rice without a lid because rice, it steams throughout the process. All right, so it's almost ready. So I'm going to need two cups of liquid. So I'm going to take this juice from my tomatoes, and I'm actually going to measure it out and count it as part of my liquid because if you add too much liquid in your rice, then it's all bad. You will have sticky, gummy, mushy rice. And I don't know about you, but I hate sticky, gummy, mushy rice. I don't like it. I don't want it. So I'm just going to do a quick little squeeze. Squeeze out some of this liquid that the tomatoes are going to have to offer. Wow, you see all this liquid I'm getting off? This is a lot of liquid. So you got to account for all of this liquid. And I'm still not going to be able to get out all the liquid. So what I like to do is, I like to cook them down a little bit. So that way, I can get out most of the liquid that I can. I won't get out all of it, but at least I'll get out majority of it, and it'll be all good. So I got my rice going, turning nice and brown. When you're doing this, you want your uh, stove or your skillet to be on like a medium low. So that's moving around. Remember, uh, rice does burn or brown quickly. So you want to keep your head in the game and make sure 
that you're moving it or that you're aware while you're multitasking, while you're moving around. So let's see how much liquid we have right now. Okay, we're just shy of a cup. So I'm gonna shake this up, turn this down a little bit because I gotta do a little time consuming task. So I'm gonna go, to go ahead and get in two cups of liquid. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and drop this in here. Listen to that sizzle. Now that's a good sizzle. So we're gonna mix this around. We're mixing, we're mixing. We're gonna wait for it to come to a boil. Good boil. Now you wanna check your rice about halfway through, just in case you know you need to add just a little bit more water or a little bit more seasoning. Cause at the halfway point, that's when you're able to come in and just correct it. You know, you wanna do everything by the book the first time so that way if you do need to make any adjustments you can do it no stress no skin off your back you're well equipped for it we're going to turn it down to low because it's boiling and i'm going to check it about halfway through your spanish rice should take about 30 40 minutes to cook but make sure it's on low keep your eye on it and i'll see you guys back i'm gonna get set up so we can do this pico de gallo and the avocado cream so i'll see you guys back in a few minutes Taco Tuesday time, Taco Tuesday time, Taco Tuesday time, Taco Tuesday. Yeah, right, folks, we're back. It's time for Taco Tuesday. We're still in the thick of things, still in the trenches. So the first thing we're going to do is make our sauce. Here, I put everything in one bowl. I'm sorry, I just stepped away to get my uh, blender. I put everything in one bowl because I'm like a blonde. I'll occasionally be doing stuff, moving fast, and I'll forget stuff. And when you're making a sauce, I feel like everything is vital to the sauce. You want to make sure you have in every single component. You want to make sure you have the lemon juice, the lime juice, the garlic, the cilantro, the sour cream. You want to make sure you have everything in here. So what I have in my bowl, cilantro, sour cream. I have salt, pepper, one lemon, one lime. I have a half a cup of salsa verde. Uh, I have a cup of sour cream in here. I'm going to put in one avocado and salt and pepper. That's it. Everything goes in the blender in one shot. So I'm going to go ahead. Oh, and I put in three garlic cloves too. I got to add my garlic in somewhere. So I got that all going in here. This is just how you make a sauce quick. This is how you do something that you know you're busy or you have a lot of things to do that day and you need it to be simplified and you need it to be quick. So just throw it in one big bowl together. So that way when it's time for you to use it, you can just say, okay, got it. Everything's in this bowl. I put everything together in no time. So that's my little trick that I want to share with you guys. Now, this is how you get out the seed from the avocado. That was easy. I don't recommend doing it as fast as me because I don't want you cutting yourself. Then sending me a message saying that I cut myself doing it the way that you do it. I'm just comfortable with knives. I'm not cocky. I still respect the knife because I know it can cut my finger off at any point in time. But I'm comfortable. I'm used to it. So I'm going to go and turn my blender on. Just put it on three and let it all blend together. Turned it into a green sauce. That's why I like the cilantro. 
the cilantro turned it into a green sauce. I don't know if you can hear me. Um, it just didn't give it flavor, but it gave it the nice color that I liked from the sauce too. Because I like people to know, hey, you know, it's a green sauce. So I'm going to taste it. You always, always, always want to taste your work. You always want to make sure that it's as good as you intended and that it has everything in here that you need. Mmm. Mmm. I'm going to have my personal assistant taste it. See what she thinks about it. My director, my sous chef. I'm going to see what she thinks. See if she likes it. She says it's money. I did it right the first time. All right. So now the sauce is done. Let me rinse our sauce bowl out. Rinse it out. Rinse it out. So I can put our finished product in there. So chef, can you do me a favor and hand me my spatula? Because I want to make sure I get every drop of soup. Soup? My spatula? The... Oh, I'm sorry. Soup. Oh, my gosh. Where's my brain at? I have too much going on in my life. Soup. I'm thinking about soup because I want to make you guys a tomato basil soup. No, actually my sauce. My cream. The sauce that's going to go for our wonderful carne asada tacos. Alright. So now we got our spatula. I'm going to go ahead and remove the blade. Make sure you remove your blade if you can so that way you don't cut your little fingers. I don't want to even have them cut fingers. Kitchen safety is always a must. It's the most important thing, being safe in the kitchen. All right, make sure you get all this good sauce. Leave no man behind. You want the sauce. You need it. You love it. You got to have it. I just did about a quarter, a little less than a quarter teaspoon of salt and pepper because, you know, like I said, I want the avocado, sour cream, the salsa verde. You want all that to be the star of the show. So I'm going to move this stuff out the way. Rinse my hands off. All right, so we got this. It's looking good. It's nice. Move our blender out the way, our, our magic blender. All right, so that's good. So you guys see that? I'm going to go and put it in the fridge so it gets nice and cold for us. Now it's time to make our wonderful pico de gallo. I've taken one red onion, did a small dice on it. I've taken one, one bunch of cilantro leaves, just ripped the uh, leaves off, chopped it up. Now I have one juice, no, two juice from a lime. And so I'm going to show you guys how to dice tomatoes. Now when you're doing like a salsa, a pico de gallo, it's a little different. Because salsa, you can roast a whole tomato, just chop a whole tomato off in there. But when you're doing like your pico, you want to make sure that you kind of just leave the seeds where they are. You don't want the seeds. You know, it's not really attractive to eat a seed. You'll learn that, you know, when you're doing fine dining, that you can go ahead and get rid of the seeds. So I'm going to do little strips. And then from my strips, I'm just going to do some dices. Get this all out the way so you guys can see. Make some dices here. I found the smallest cutting board that I have today. If it was small, I wanted it. Maybe I should have used my bigger cutting board for a little more room. But I said, why not? It's Taco Tuesday. Hey, go, go small or go home. So I'm going to go ahead and finish dicing up these wonderfully red ripe tomatoes. And then I'll see you guys back when it's time to finish assembling our pico de gallo. Welcome back. We've made our crema. We have our rice that I've already checked. I had to add just a few... It's a little bit more seasoning, a little bit more stock. So make sure you check it now that we are almost at our halfway point. I got my pan that's working on getting hot. Now we're going to finish up this pico de gallo. I have the juice of two limes that I'm going to go ahead and throw in there. Now I'm going to get me some pepper. A little bit more pepper. And I'm going to get me some salt. I'm going to stir it up. I'm going to taste it. Mmm. This is looking real good. Mmm. Got some nice lime juice in there. Got the cilantro, the red onion. Let's get a little bit more pepper. Oh. Uh, 
Oh, shucks now. Look at this. All right, we're almost there. I can't wait to taste it. All right, almost there. Give me a nice big spoonful, and I'm going to taste it. All right, let's see how good we made it. Mmm. 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 This is good. Mmm. I'm going to add just a little bit more salt. You know what my secret weapon is when I do my pico de gallo? I have a little secret weapon that I do when I'm making pico. I just take a little hot sauce and I just put a few dashes in it just to liven up the party. Give it a little acid, a little pop in your mouth because sometimes the tomatoes aren't live enough. So we'll get the acid from the hot sauce. And we'll just make it special. So let's get one more little, little taste of it. Now that's a pico de gallo. This is finished. I'm going to get my meat out, my set up. And then I'll be right back so we can make this meat together. All right, we're back. Pico de gallo, the cream is done, the rice is done. Now it's time to do the star of the show, which is the meat, the carne asada. So here's my carne asada that I marinated last night. I have bay leaf, cilantro, orange, lime, orange and lime juice, uh, cumin, salt, pepper, garlic, onion powder. So to make this easy for me, I'm just, oh, and I put a limerita in. So to make this easy for me before I actually get to throwing everything out on the grill, I want to actually take my meat off because I don't want to cook the cilantro because the cilantro will burn. It'll just make like a little mess. So I don't need all that mess or headache while I'm trying to make some tacos real quick. Now, I like this recipe because the lima rita just gives the meat a really good flavor. It tenderizes it so you don't have to use a very expensive cut of meat. I used the bottom round, like I said, I used it because I know that I was going to marinate it, let it get some flavor on it. You just want to make sure you get all this cilantro off of it. Alright, oh, oh, and the seeds, you don't want the seeds. Let's make sure I got all the meat out, I think I did, did I? Because I don't want to actually throw any meat down the garbage disposal. All right, so I got everything out. So I'm going to throw this over here. I'm going to wash my hands. All right. So now we are ready to get to grilling. I got my grill on medium. See, you guys get to see the meat that I have that's marinated. So I'm going to get this grill fired up. I'm not going to put so much meat on because I want to be able to control it. So I'm just going to spread this oil around. Get this oil nice and good in the grooves. Just a little side note, I know you guys are probably wondering, hey, you know, how is her cast iron grill not rusted? Well, every time after I clean it, I slather it down with a little bit of oil, both sides. All right, that's good to go. I'm gonna grab this meat. Oh yeah, there's that sizzle I like. I'm gonna bring this just a little bit closer to me. Now, well, this is actually gonna cook four minutes top. This cooks really fast, so you don't even have to worry about it. All right, we get three pieces on there, so I'll see you guys back when the uh, meat is finished, but before you guys go, I'm gonna season it up. <coughs> this always gets me with a little bit of salt and pepper, because I don't like putting salt on this particular cut of meat or any meat because it will suck all the moisture out of it. So I put the salt on right before I cook it. So when you do your marinades, no salt. All right, I'll see you guys back in a few minutes. Welcome back. Taco Tuesday is officially finished. I got my pico de gallo, my avocado cream. I have my meat. I'm going to throw in a tortilla shell. I have my cheese. So we get this last tortilla, uh, tortilla shell cooking. I'm going to show you guys real quick how I chopped up my meat. Oops. Slide this out the way. Oh, look, piece fell for me. I'm gonna jump back over here to this tortilla. Remember, we multitask. 
It's okay though. No rush. Alright, I like to just do it until it starts getting a little crispy. Then I'll take it and I'll bend it in half. Do one of those numbers. Get a little color on the side. Then I'll flip it over. Get a little more color on the other side. Then I'll allow it to drain. Almost ready. Almost ready, Freddy. I can taste it. All right. Tortilla shell is good and ready to go. So let me open it up so that I can get it to drain just a little bit better. I like to put my tongs right there so that way I can kind of shake it, shake it on down. So that way I can get all that extra grease off. Throw those down and show you how to cut this. I just like to cut little strips out of it real quick. And if get some fat, I just cut around it. Then after I cut my strips, I just make little dices out of it. I make sure that I cut against the grain. And I go ahead, I'm going to add that to my pile of meat. Now that my pile of meat's done, I'm going to bring this back over here so we can assemble these tacos that we got. All right, so this is how we're going to do it first. Actually, I'm going to put some, some uh, what did I make? Some rice. I'm going to put some rice on it first. That way, I don't have to go back and forth. i got my good old rice that's been hanging out, getting all nice and good and flavorful and cooked for me. Put some rice in there. Got to cook in my little electric skillet so that way I can have some room on my stove. So now that we got that done, I'm just going to use my hands so I can dig right on in. I'm going to get some meat in here. Now, I don't like to go stingy on the meat because, you know, it's Tuesday taco. It's like Taco Tuesday, Tuesday tacos. Ha, I like that. It's Taco Tuesday. I'm going to put the crema right here next. Oh, I can't wait to bite into this. I use a slotted spoon for my pico de gallo because I already got some sauce going on. So I don't want it, you know, watery. Oh, look at this. This is just... Boy, I love to eat. I can't wait. Just got to throw my cheese on, and I am good to go. Oh, yeah. Make sure I get it from top to bottom. Oh, this looks, I love tacos. Oh, yeah. I can't wait. All right. So, let's see. Oh, man. All right, let me move this meat out the way. So that way I can give y'all the view. Let me grab me a fork. Let's see what else can I move out the way. Let me get my sauces out the way. Because I just need you guys to focus on me. Move my salt, my pepper. Now let me put my cheese on here. I want you guys to watch this with me. Because I'm going to lay down these, these little, this uh, Cortica cheese. Oh, so pretty. It's going to look good. Oh, yeah. Look at all the Cortica. Ooh, buddy. We made us some good tacos tonight. Marinated in some lime arita for 24 hours. You can go longer. Some days I'll do it for three. I'll do it for three days. If I know on a Sunday uh, or Saturday rather, getting ready for Taco Tuesday, I hook it up. All right. So now this is the test. Mmm. 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 Happy Taco Tuesday.